What is up, guys? Welcome to the Dynasty Fan Podcast. Got a good show for you today, breaking down the top 15 NFL rookie wide receivers coming into the NFL draft. Going to start off with 11 through 15. So a couple of things that we're going to be looking at, guys, I'll show you. Uh, I have some rookie profiles. I only have the receivers so far. I want to do some more with the running backs. I don't know if I'll get to top 15, but hopefully I can do a top 10 running backs before the NFL draft. That is the goal. But for now, I have these rookie profiles. They are going to be on Twitter, available pretty soon before the NFL draft, probably on Wednesday. But have them here for you to see right now. So hopefully you guys are doing good. Thank you guys for tuning in. Give you a quick little rundown of what is on here, guys. So obviously looking at a lot of the analytics side, and actually I was able to watch also some film on these guys. So we have a couple of strengths and weaknesses on there. And a brief little summary. So getting started, guys, some of the things we're looking at, if you're looking at the stats, you have your receiving. So you have your receptions, your yards, their total touchdowns, their PFF receiving grade, their yards per reception, their A dot, which is average depth of target, their yak per reception. I didn't want to just put their total uh, yards after the catch. I wanted to have actual the per reception because as some people got a lot more receptions than others. So looking at the yak per reception is a little more fair right across the board. Then you have your target share. Yards per route run, your dominator rating, can, contested catch percentage is a CTC, and then your percentage of snaps in the slot and also out wide. Then we have some draft capital, predicted draft capital, obviously, and then their position rank for me. So looking at this, guys, this is my number 15 wide receiver that I have. I have Trey Palmer. There's a lot of guys that you can put in here, guys, but I kind of like Trey Palmer. I like the story behind it. Really looking into the profile, I can get, get on board with this guy. Right, came out of high school, was a four-star recruit, which is what right there, right there at the top what we have. So four-star recruit out of high school. And he goes to LSU, guys, and he's just buried behind talent, right? Massive talent. You have Justin Jefferson there as well as Jamar Chase. Then a couple of years later, right, even when Jefferson's gone, you got Kayshawn Booty there who's had a solid season, right, in 2021. Even the neighbors, right, is doing really good there. So he's just buried behind talent, doesn't really get an opportunity so he transfers his senior year, guys. And once he transfers to Nebraska, he just explodes onto the scene. Had a thousand yards, over a thousand yards last season, his senior year on 71 receptions, nine touchdowns. So 14.7 yards per reception, 8.13.5. So dominated rating, though, guys, 46.1% of his team's total offense. So that was the 93rd percentile. Contested catch percentage is a little low, 30.4. But this dude definitely goes after every ball right and I really like his attitude out on the field he's definitely uh, goes out there plays his butt off right so I I like Trey Palmer and I don't think he's just a speedster right so for the strengths his speed he had the number one 40 time 433 or something like that but he had the fastest 40 out of the wide receiver so sneakily guys I think I think day three is what I have maybe we've seen these speedsters right move up and get good draft capital right if somebody in the NFL really loves him right or just falls in love with that speed I think that he could sneakily maybe move up or surprise us, be one of those surprises in the draft that gets a little bit higher draft capital than we're expecting. So I really like Trey Palmer. I'm on board with him. I think he's a threat on all levels. I know a lot of people think that he's just a deep ball threat, but that's not necessarily true, right? He did have 500 yards, right, were on deep targets, but he had some behind the scrimmage, right? He had some on the intermediate, right, about 250 on the intermediate side, and some from zero to nine yards. So he he definitely is versatile in my opinion. And I think now, I mean, he's really, he hasn't really been on the field, right? He hasn't had that game time experience. So in a good offense with a good coach and a good system, I think that he could develop maybe into something more, but definitely could be on the team, right? Make a, make a roster, definitely with a special team's ability. He's just a playmaker, right? So I really like Trey Palmer. I think that he could maybe blossom into something maybe in, a, in maybe two seasons, right? In the right spot, like I said. So someone to come to keep an eye on is Trey Palmer. So I have him right now as my wide receiver 15. So looking into my wide receiver 14, guys, we're going to have Xavier Hutchinson. A lot of people like Xavier Hutchinson, guys. And I'll, I'll be honest, guys, it's not really like I like, I don't love any of these players, but I know a lot of people really like Xavier Hutchinson. Three-star recruit coming out of high school, guys. And really, he's almost 23 years old, right? He's going to be 23 pretty soon here. So he's an older player, an older prospect. So if you don't like that, I don't really like that typically. 
right? I like the early breakout and then just show uh, production early on. I kind of value that a little bit more. But this guy, he's pretty much a six-year senior, right? He had he did well his junior year and his senior year there at Iowa State. But he went to junior college for two years, guys. He went to Blinn Junior College in Texas for two years. So to me, I think that's a little bit of a knock, right? He, he's had production, but it was very late. It's pretty much his fifth and sixth year in college already. He's definitely physical, attacks the ball. He's got good size, right? 6'2", 203. He definitely uses his size and his strength to his advantage. He uses his hands right on corners, smaller corners, and he uses that to get open. I think he relies on that a little bit too much, though, in my opinion. So Yak per reception, 4.2. Target share, a couple of little things right there if you want to take a look at it. And guys, all these are going to be on my profile on Twitter, like I said, on Wednesday, if I didn't say that already. So he had back-to-back 1,000-yard seasons, definitely good. But like I said, it was his basically fifth and sixth year in college, guys. And then he had Nine out of 13 of his games, his senior season were 100 or 90 plus yard games. So that's pretty good, man. But the only thing, one of the knocks on him, guys, besides his speed is a little bit slower, is that he was very volume dependent, right? He got a thousand yards, right? But it was like, man, he had almost like 160 targets or something like that. It was very high when I saw that, right? And he had a lot of games where his, like his catch percentage, right? is just a little bit low. He seems like he gets a lot of targets. So I think he's going to be volume dependent. Right, I think he's a volume-dependent receiver, which is not a bad thing, but I just don't know if he's going to command that many targets to be relevant for us guys in the NFL right on a team. So we'll see what happens. I think he's a good little flyer. And one thing about him, guys, is he's improved right from going from junior college to being the main guy on your team. So that's something to think about, right? If he goes in the right system, can he keep improving and continually uh, maybe be something down the road? Possibly right? a wide receiver, too, for a, for a team. Maybe help our rosters a little bit, but... That is Xavier Hutchinson, guys. And obviously, guys, if you have any comments over any of these players, let me know. Let me know in the comment section. And also, uh, if who would you put on this list, right? I know there's a lot of guys that, you know, Parker Washington. There's going to be some guys on here that you're going to wonder why they're not on here. You can put it in the comments, and I can let you know my reasoning as to why, guys. So going into my wide receiver, 13, I have Jaden Reed. A lot of guys like Jaden Reed also. Definitely like Jaden Reed. He's a good little good little flyer, good little dart throw. So he's got good ball skills. Stacking defenders, guys, he uses his body real well. I think he relies on it a little too much, right? Contested catches. He, One thing he's improved on every year, guys, from his uh, freshman year is his contested catch percentage. That's one thing I noticed. It was actually really good uh, in 2022, above 50%. So that's pretty good. Then his dominated rating, 35.7, so 73rd percentile. Got good target share. Good, yeah, good yards per reception. So I think he's got he's got a good, definitely got some potential, right? He's a good route runner. He's got some special teams ability also, as well as guys. One of the one of the weaknesses though I think for him is the amount of targets that were contested, right? So in 2021, 27 percent of his targets were contested catches. So to me, that just raises the the question of is he separating, right? Is he getting that separation? If pretty much almost 30% of your targets are, are contested, right? Is, are you getting the separation or maybe it's a QB thing? I don't know. Also guys, he's a fifth year senior, right? He was a transfer. uh, He transferred his freshman year at Western Michigan, right? He was playing there at Western Michigan, had a decent season in Western Michigan. And then he moves on. He has to sit out a year. So he's a fifth year senior guys. And he didn't do as well his senior year. This, This, if you look at these receiving stats, these are from 2021. He had a little bit of a down year, his senior year. He had the, about the same amount of receptions. I think it was like 55 or so, 55 receptions. So similar amount of receptions, but the yards were a lot lower. I think it was about 700 yards or so, somewhere around there. So Jaden Reed, definitely good potential, guys. Like I said, he had an early breakout his freshman season at, at Western Michigan. But we'll see. It took him a while, too, to get it going, guys. He, after that, he didn't really do much until his junior year after transferring out and sitting out a year, right? So he sits out a year doesn't do much sophomore year. Then he comes out, does something his junior year, which is pretty much his fourth year, right? Already in college football gets a one, 1000 yard season. Right. But like I said, senior season after that was not that good. So 15% of his snaps in the slot, 84% out wide guys. And looking at the, the 84% guys out wide in the NFL, he's five eleven, a little bit undersized, right. To play outside and also guys, his burst, that's a little bit 
when I look at the separation, right, and all those contested catches, does he have the burst to separate? And when you're looking at it right here, he was in the 30th percentile, right, for his burst score. So something to think about, guys, with uh, Jaden Reed, see if he will be consistent enough, right, get open consistent enough in the NFL and win on the outside enough to help our fantasy roster. So Jaden Reed coming in at 13 for me. So now we're moving on to wide receiver 12. We got Rashi Rice, guys. And I like I like Rice a lot. I know he's a little bit older, right? He's almost 23 years old. He's a, a senior this year, had a solid season. He really did pretty good his sophomore and junior year as well, around 700 yards. Not bad. Considering, guys, that they had uh, Danny Gray on the roster, who was a third-round pick, and as well as Kylan Granson. And Rashi Rice also breaks – Emmanuel Sanders receiving yards record in a single season there at SMU over 1300 yards for Rashi Rice on 96 receptions, 10 touchdowns guys. So I like Rashi Rice, right? Good body control works back to the ball. Well, right. Stays active in his routes. So also good ball tracking, good over the, over the shoulder catches and his yacht guys is really good. He's got pretty much, this guy gets yards everywhere all over the field. So I think he's a good versatile player. I think that if he lands in a good system, right, right now we're predicting maybe a third round. Maybe he can even sneak up into the second round if somebody likes him that much, right? Danny Gray was a third round pick. So I think Rasheed Rice can go round two, three. So right now my wide receiver 12, I definitely like him, guys. He plays uh, 82% out wide, only 17 in the slot. But he definitely has some burst, guys, to get open. Right? He showed off some of his ability in the NFL combine got 1.49, 10 yard split at the NFL combine. So definitely he picks up speed pretty quickly. Right. And then he had the highest vertical guys. He was 41 inch vertical. So he had the highest vertical. He was tied for the highest vertical with, with Bryce Ford and Whedon from West Virginia. So Rashi Rice, a little bit higher than Quinn Johnson, right. Then QJ also half, uh, half an inch, basically higher than QJ. So he's definitely got some bursts and some athleticism. So I like Rashi Rice right here at my wide, as my wide receiver 12. So now moving on, we have our wide receiver 11, guys. And this is the last one for the video right now. We have A.T. Perry. I know a lot of people like A.T. Perry. I'm, a, I'm not really too high on him, guys, to be honest. Um, I don't know what the ceiling is there for A.T. Perry. He's a little bit older prospect, right? He definitely has the size, man, the size-speed combo is definitely good on and in his advantage 23.4 years old already definitely he produced guys back to back thousand yard seasons there at wake forest so good change of pace good tempo he's got good quick footwork quick footwork so pretty deceiving for his size right he's got good footwork and he's definitely a red zone threat had 11 touchdowns his senior season there at wake forest the one thing that was a little bit shocking to me, though, guys, was the yak per reception, only 2.0 yards per uh, yak per reception. So that was a little bit that was a little bit shocking, guys, because honestly, on his tape, he looks pretty good. Like he he breaks tackles and he can get away a little bit. He does have some yard after the catch ability. But looking at that stat, um, that stood out for sure. Right. 2.0 yak per reception. Good target share. Right. Decent dominator rating and the contested catch percentage. Forty four percent. Not bad. But in for being for as big as he is, guys, also to to have below 50 right in the contested catch percentage, which there should be 50 50 balls. That is a little bit concerning. And also it was on 25 attempts, guys. That's kind of a lot of attempts to be um, contested on. Right. In my opinion. Right. For uh, JSN had 10 guys. I was looking at at that earlier. JSN only had 10 contested catches in 2021. So something to think about. Right. Are they getting that separation if there's such a high amount? of contested catches like i said it could be the quarterback or sometimes guys these bigger guys rely on their size a little bit more right in their hands a little bit right stacking defenders putting hands on defenders so at perry though guys you can't knock him right two back-to-back thousand yard seasons right in 2021 22 he was a redshirt freshman so that's why he's a little bit older but he's continued to develop right so maybe he could be a wide receiver two three option in the nfl right now thinking maybe a uh, draft draft capital maybe in third or fourth round so he's my wide receiver 11 guys if he goes to a good option right you're hoping that he goes with a good quarterback as all of these guys really right but he could if they could use him with the deep ball ability as he does have the deep threat as well which is interesting but just with his size and speed 
as well as a big body red zone threat. So if somebody like that could use him in the offense, right, that's kind of what you're hoping on with A.T. Perry. So that is my 11 through 15, guys. Let me know in the comments and be sure to check out the 1 through 10 videos up here.